Christ is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Great to be in God's house here in the beautiful outdoors and his creation, be able to do what we are created to do, respond to his grace and his mercy and his justice with our praise, with our listening ears, with our open heart. Welcome you very warmly here, very warmly here. Who'd have thought here in June we'd be trying to figure out if it'd be too hot? But it looks like you've figured out what to do. <laughs> Got a few folks here in the center. That's great. You found some heat, some, some shade. I'm going to stay center here for the sake of our live streaming. So welcome you who are worshiping from home today. It is wonderful to be a part of your lives and you a part of us. So we join our hearts and our minds, our voices uh, in, in worship today. I'm Pastor Keith Piotter. Pastor Caleb Waite is teaching a Bible study right now. He typically comes out about midway through. We may see him in time for communion, but we got a new membership class going on that he and I are tag teaming probably through the month of July. Eric Bry, youth minister, is uh, running all the chords, glory bound praise team, helping lead us in worship. Hopefully everyone has a handout, a bulletin, kind of follow along. Uh, that'll make things a little bit easier as well. A couple quick announcements. Probably you've seen passing by the church or are looking today that the uh, stained glass window is done. It is completed a whole month ahead of time. Uh, it was about half done last week, and, and we are so grateful for that. Uh, we still have the phase of putting in some, uh, some flood lighting that's going to give it a big projection for outside. That was its main purpose, this resurrected Christ blessing the community. So it's great that we could have that in the backdrop of our worship as well, recognizing God's hand of benediction in our lives. This weekend is also a national day in recognition for law enforcement. And so you've got a handout. Uh, it's been a little while since I figured out we have, to my knowledge, nine law enforcement officers in our congregation. Probably have missed some, and I, I hate for that to happen, so we'll hopefully kind of get but we uh, honored them a little bit this morning at the eight o'clock service, and we will have a prayer for them as well as they carry out their duty and responsibility for us to let them know in a culture of kind of growing disrespect for law enforcement that we, as their faith family, their pastors, we have their back. We've got them in our prayers, and we're very, very grateful for their sacrifice and service in our behalf for our safety. Uh, so that is why you have that handout, with, along with some ways that you can think through on how to encourage law enforcement. Our theme, a couple weeks ago, we entered into the summer mode and our outside mode uh, with the book of Genesis. And we started off uh, kind of raising the question or saying that, you know, the consequence of us as Christians forgetting our history a true story, his story, as it unfolds from Genesis chapter 1 on. The consequences of forgetting that uh, are disastrous. That word, it is. And so we started off um, Genesis 1 and 2, we talked about creation and its implication. Last week we talked about the fall of Adam and Eve into sin. This week we're into chapter 4, and that is the story of Cain and Abel. Next week, just for a little heads up, we go to the story of Noah and Noah's Ark. That's chapters 5 through 9. And so I'd encourage you to, if you haven't already, to prepare for next week or chapter 4 this week. We're reading the whole book of Genesis. Some of you have already done that numerous times. But to prepare will be through chapters 9, 10, 11 next week. But all in the effort of recognizing how these stories of Genesis have a profound effect on our present day lives and lays the foundation for our Christian faith. That's what we're doing here this summer. Pray that this is truly a uh, delightful morning in worship and praise. Let's stand if you feel comfortable singing our opening song, Hallelujah. No, nope. uh, He Knows My Name.
make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious God, we praise you that you hear us when we call. Your Spirit drew us into worship today as we come from a week full of a lot of stuff. We need to be reined in by your grace. Speak to us as your Spirit works through word and through sacrament, heeding each of our needs and answering according to your good and gracious will. We honor and praise you this day to inspire us to walk through the rest of our week in inspiration and witness. For Jesus' sake, amen. Please be seated. Turning then to God's holy word that will just kind of then set the, set the uh, context for our time of confession and absolution. Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 through 16 is almost all of Genesis 4, so these several verses we focus on today. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now, Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you so angry? Why is your face so downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where's your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which opens its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I could bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. If anyone kills Cain, he will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden word of our Lord. Second reading for today is from Mark chapter 4, the gospel reading, these nine verses. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was a lar so large that he got into a boat and sat on it, set it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables. And in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears, let him listen. 
gospel of our Lord. So if this, is, this time as a family of faith, we want to pause and be honest and go to the Lord in confession, lay it before him, lay it before the foot of the cross in order to empty ourselves out to be filled again with the wonderful good news of his absolution. So pray along with me, please. Gracious God, following the fatal pattern set by Adam and then Cain, it now comes to us naturally that our anger and our jealousy consume us. We know what's right, the right thing to say and do, and we don't. We don't carry it out. We take matters into our own hands, and then we justify our actions. Forgive us, Lord, for all of our sins. We can't cover them up. But you can, because of your love for us. Be gracious to us, Lord, with your mercy, as we now lay before you those matters of anger and revenge and sin that lay in our heart. Brothers and sisters, our great God accomplishes his justice with his grace. And you and I are marked, we're marked in holy baptism by virtue of Jesus, his son's blood covering over your sin and mine. You have been made right. You are made just again through faith in Christ, crucified and risen for you. Your sins are fully forgiven on account of Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the singing of our sermon song.
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock, our living Redeemer, Jesus. Amen. So the fall, or uh, original sin, Genesis 3, in the garden, starting point for all sin in the world, starting point of all pain, all suffering, all brokenness in the world, Adam and Eve having essentially made two very fatal decisions. Number one, they broke trust with God. And number two, they decided that by instead of, instead of being served by God, that they would be God or wanted to be God. They now knew good and evil. And as a result, they were no longer capable of avoiding evil. They were no longer innocent. And you and I are still living within that reality, within ourselves and in our world still today. And as I was preparing for this week, I was just reminded about how amazing it is how here in Genesis, things get started. And, you know, it doesn't take very long how things snowball out of control. Adam and Eve, you would recall, uh, were to learn how to provide for themselves outside of the garden with nothing. And within that context, they started a family. Chapter 4 already informs us about anger and about jealousy, which horrifyingly results with the very first loss of life, and not by natural means. Cain takes his little brother Abel's life. And to this day, fighting between people, fighting within families, fighting within people groups, senseless violence internationally and in our own countries, streets and cities, captures our attention, captures our emotions. And it's, and it's ugly. It's ugly to God too. And though there are from here on out in Genesis and throughout the Bible, all kinds of stories demonstrating this ugliness what you and I want to be able to catch here about the Old Testament, starting right in Genesis, about how God is both just and he's merciful at the same time. Ultimately, for us to see how it all then leads to the fulfillment of his plan to make everything right again. So reviewing very quickly, what happened? What happened? Well, Cain brought some fruit from his crops as an offering to the Lord. He worked crops. His brother Abel worked livestock. Abel brought fat portions from the firstborn of his flocks. And God looked with favor upon Abel's but not upon Cain's. We don't know exactly why Abel's offering uh, was accepted and Cain's was not. We do get a little insight in the book of Hebrews that it ultimately had to do with faith, had to do with trust in God. So how did Cain react? He gets angry. Notice Cain does not repent. Notice Cain doesn't go back and, you know, I'm going to get another offering. I'm going to get it right this time, Lord. No. Pride. Adam and Eve's jealousy. Adam and Eve's selfishness playing itself out now in their son Cain's life. It's not fair. Ever said that before? Kids pointing to their brother and sister, right? It's not fair. We come by it honestly. When we think about things we feel are unjust, someone else getting what we deserve. And that's what's going on within Cain's heart. And so God steps in and he tells Cain, 
tame. Do what's right. Do what's right, and you'll be accepted. No, the truth of the matter is, Cain knew how to tithe. Cain knew how to give the first fruits of his wealth. But notice here what God is doing. God is actually trying to encourage Cain here. He's trying to comfort Cain. He says, Cain, just do what's right. Do what's right, and you'll be fine. You'll be accepted. But then a warning. Remember hearing the warning? It's these words. Cain, when you do what's right, and you don't do it, listen to this, gang. Sin is crouching at your door, and it desires to have you. Now, folks, that is, that's a warning to you and me. It really is. Because we inherited this same thing right from Cain. Knowing what's right, knowing what's wrong. Remember, created in the image of God. Yes, admittedly, that's now a very broken image. But like Cain, we often know what's right. We know what's wrong. And we know what to say. And yet we won't do it. We won't say it. This past week, I want to say on several occasions, can I be honest? Transparency here. Looking in the mirror, I sense the Holy Spirit saying to me this week one or two times, Piotr, sin is crouching at your door. Be careful. Anyone here relate? I don't think I'm alone in that. And all too often, I believe you and I, we learn from this Genesis area here that, you know, we tend to think of sin as something we just do as, a, you know, it's just another choice in life, right? Just another alternative. We tend to let secular institutions and culture and our own politics decide for us what's right and wrong or change for us what's right and wrong. When we as human beings who are made in the image of God, who have a personality, spirituality, we've got morality and a conscience. We know. We know. That's why Peter in his first epistle describes the devil as a lion. Kind of laying down. Folks online are seeing a big picture of, an eye, of a lion right now. Just crouching down waiting for an opportunity. You see, if you and I could just stop thinking of sin as something we just kind of occasionally do, you know, sometimes make wrong choices, right? Hey, parents, I know we like to use this terminology with our kids, right? Bad choice, good choice. I just want to say, I think that, you know, we've we got to make sure that we help our kids understand and grow to understand exactly what sin is. That sin is a personal affront to God. Sin offends God. And there's this crouching beast that is lurking who wants to have them, who wants to have your kid for lunch. We all have these issues in our lives, don't we? We all have those temptations. We all have those areas we are weak. The devil knows that better than we do. So it's not just a bad choice, good choice. Satan knows that. And so he manipulates the situation so that we could just justify our behavior. From the Garden of Eden to the dry desert land where Cain took Abel's life. Right here to this beautiful summer day in Bettendorf, Iowa. Something else we learn clearly here in Genesis 4 is just why it is that holding on to anger can be so dangerous. You know, in and of itself, anger is not sin. Anger is an emotion that God actually provides, something that can serve a valuable purpose. Anger can help us make the situation right, do something constructive to bring peace. 
In fact, there's a great passage in Ephesians chapter 4 I love to use with like a bride and groom getting ready to get married. Ephesians 4, these words. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. What great words for us. Being angry is not sin, but you and I know that it is often a doorway that leads to sin. And we all know people who just love to hang on to anger for a long time, right? Resentment. And we've watched it. It literally has changed them. It controls them. It's toxic, affecting their relationships. Anger, brothers and sisters, is not something we were meant to hold on to. Cain found that out the hard way. We have to get rid of it with God's help. We have to forgive it by his grace. We have to move on and we have to give it over to the one who says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. In fact, he'll take care of it. He says, I'll take care of it for you better than you can. So the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? How many of you knew that line came from this story? Spoken by the first murderer trying to cover up his sin. The Lord said, what have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you, Cain, are under a curse, and you're driven from the ground, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground from now on and will no longer yield its crops for you, you will be a restless wanderer on the earth. As you can remember from the reading, Cain couldn't bear the punishment he just received. What a tragic story. However, the big picture, right? Big picture. Genesis 4 is about God being just. And it's about God making right out of injustice and that is good news because there is a whole lot of injustice out there wouldn't you agree with me and here in Genesis 4 we begin to kind of learn and see how to deal with that so first of all I think what we see is that we have to understand here that sin does not resolve or solve injustice Revenge does not resolve injustice. You know, Abel didn't do anything wrong, at least in this case. Cain is actually angry with God, but he takes out that anger on God. He takes it out on his little brother. And it doesn't solve a thing, does it? But it makes me think about how many times I've done that. And for us to think about how many times we take our anger out on, on someone else. Maybe even those who are closest to us in our family. Why do we do that? We see it all over the place. Law enforcement has to clean up this kind of mess all the time. Anger taken out on innocent people. Starting with Cain. That kind of reaction towards injustice only makes things worse. But here's the thing, and this is going to be a great note to end on. Here's the thing. If anyone understands injustice, brothers and sisters, it is our Heavenly Father. The shedding of the innocent blood of Cain, in Cain, or of Abel, in Cain's case. Actually, the Bible says Abel's blood calls out to him, calls out to God. 
Abel's blood. And if that's true, what it is, think about how over the course of history, through centuries, since then, that the innocent blood has been crying out to God. Imagine the volume. Imagine what that must sound like to him. And especially, here we go, especially the blood of his own innocent son. See here what it is in the story of Cain and Abel. See what it points us to? Genesis 4 is critical. It follows Genesis 3 and 2 and 1. It's a building story. We see here in the story of Cain and Abel that it points us this first son being killed, Adam's son, leading all the way to God's own son, his blood, him being killed for us, Jesus. That horrible injustice because of Adam and Cain and your sin and mine, then culminating in the ugliness of a cross. I mean, does the crucifixion of Jesus seem just to you? Think about that for a minute. The sinless Son of God, full of love, full of compassion, full of truth, taking the fall for you and me? Is there any justice in that? No. No. God knows injustice. And the greatest news of all, it was his plan, the greatest news of all is that in that tragic injustice, 2,000 years ago, Jesus' blood crying out to his Father, you and I are made just. <laughs> you and I are made right. See, God just doesn't make things just. He makes you just. And just like we said last week, that sin always has its consequences, but God accomplishes his justice with his grace. Romans 5, we have been justified by the blood of the Lamb. The consequence of our sin, washed away by the blood of Jesus, killed in our place, so that we can have what we could never accomplish on our own. Forgiveness. New life. Now and into eternity. You crying out for injustice? Man, does God have much more for that for you and me? Demonstrating it with his love for Cain. I wonder if you picked up on it. Forced to wander around the earth as a fugitive out of the presence of God, but protected by a mark that God would put on Cain. I sir say we, we don't know what this what this mark is, but some type of a mark that God in his mercy put on Cain to remind him and to remind those around him, that he, God, is the true God of perfect justice and the true God of loving mercy. May he indeed bless you and love you all the way to glory. Amen. now be our joy as a family of faith uh, to be able to go to the Lord's throne of grace in prayer, praying for one another. If you're comfortable, I invite you to stand. We pray. Heavenly Father, we've, we learned so much here from the story of Cain and Abel. We learn so much about how critically it is important to understand this story and remember this story as it proceeds from Genesis 3 and 1 and 2 to understand the reality that we live in 
in our day and time. We thank you that you are just, and you just don't make things right. You make us right through the innocent suffering and death of your only begotten son. From Abel's blood to your son's blood, making us just and holy. An account of faith, baptized into your name, having received our, our, our image, our identity from you. Bless us as we walk through our life marked by holy baptism to let those around us know that you are the perfect God of justice and of loving mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Steadfast love endures forever. Heavenly Father, in our special intercessions today, we remember several from this past week in particular, or in the past several weeks going through hard times, physically or mentally, emotionally, or even spiritually. Today, we hold up before you precious little toddler of our congregation, Ava Glenn, hospitalized this last week for uh, fever and dehydration and testing, finally took a turn, finally came home. We uh, celebrate that along with her parents, Brittany and Justin, and continue to hold Ava before you uh, for strength and, and healing again. We pray for Joan Sutcliffe, one of our homebound members who's been moved this past week now to hospice care with several very serious health issues. Watch over, protect her, be with her, fill her with your comfort. We pray for Craig Borg recovering from a, another eye surgery, trying to prevent him uh, from blindness, that that surgery and therapy would work. We pray for Kim Day, preschool staffer, recently diagnosed with very significant health issues, and as she starts her therapies and her treatment, Lord, bless her. We pray according to your will to bring healing, but by all means to be present and comfort those as we pray for your will to be done in their lives. And now amongst those we name quietly before you in our hearts. We'll give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Steadfast love endures forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you on behalf of uh, Andy and Mandy Parchard upon the safe and healthy arrival of their second child this past week, little Charles uh, born. And uh, in this world and in our their family and our family here, we thank you that all has gone so well and that little Charles is strengthening and healing up already. Mommy, on the other hand, had to return to the hospital. So we pray for Mandy as she deals with some issues of infection. We ask you to bring healing uh, to her life and bring her home quick. Be able to be reunited with little Charlie and the rest of the family. We thank you as we anticipate watching this precious child grow, as well as little Clayton Drew Piotr baptized this morning, along with his parents, Andrew and Tricia. We ask you to bless these parents as they raise their children to know you and to love you and to follow you and to confess you in their lives through the waters of holy baptism. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you on behalf of a wedding yesterday afternoon uh, with Devin Rockhold, Aubriana uh, Kling, Devin being the son of Tracy Beardsley. We ask you to be the God of their marriage, the foundation on their life as they seal this union in your grace. Walk with them, teach them, encourage them, bring them growth, that they glorify you in their marriage. We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And finally, Lord, upon all the law enforcement officers, the men and women all across our country, but particularly within our community, working for the county, working for the cities, we thank you for the sacrifices they make, working in our behalf, many of them, while we're sleeping, running into harm's way and protecting us. Lord, their work could be dangerous, so we hold them before you. We thank you for the nine officers of our congregation, uh, for their service in our behalf, for their families. Uh, give them strength and joy and help them see that as a faith family, congregation, as pastors, we have their back. 
We're praying for them. We're proud of them. And we are very thankful. They've got our support, even if that wanes in different places within our country. Bless them, Lord, and us as we serve you, our Savior King. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. To your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we prepare to receive this high-calorie spiritual meal that God gave to us as a means of his grace in our lives personally, first we confess our common faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Just a word of procedure really quickly. If this is your first time uh, here or first time back, uh, we have two different stations where communion is being offered. To your left, uh, to, 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 my, to your right. And we're going to ask that you just on your own, you're not going to get ushered away from your seat. Just kind of make your way around. Uh, you know, folks over here, we kind of come up uh, the sidewalk and pass by. And this sidewalk here to receive the host and the wine to leave your cup in a little basket there and then just to return to return to your seats so brothers and sisters our lord jesus christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread when he had given thanks he broke it he gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the remission of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace and the joy and the hope of Christ be with each of you always. And also with you. Thank you. And as you feel comfortable to share that unique peace we have with one another, within your family and across the parking lot. And you may be seated.
Savior Jesus Christ be God's blessing unto each of you in the true faith, keeping you steadfast in that faith, in that joy, in that hope, to life eternal. Amen. Let's stand, shall we, if you feel comfortable.
for the Lord's blessing and benediction on your life, on your day, on your week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 There is no God like our God.